Hi folks, I've just rebuilt my Hire Me page, uh, which you can see on the screen. And I just wanted to show you a small trick that I use to match the height of module elements beyond what matching the height of a column can do. Now, if I scroll down on this page, you'll see what the problem I was trying to solve is. You can see here that we have three different blocks, which consists of an image or an icon, a heading, a bit of text, and then below, I've just put a rough estimate of time or just a little bit of further information. And you can see on the third block on the right-hand side that this, um, this bit of text is not lined up with the other bits of text to the left of it. And that's simply because the paragraph text above is a different length. Now, if I just flip over to the live version of this site, scroll down, you'll be able to see that it's nicely lined up. And I'm going to show you how I've done this. There are three parts that we've got to address. The first is including a bit of JavaScript that will do the match height logic for us. And a library already exists. If I flip over to this page, you'll see the GitHub repository for a package called jQuery match height. And that's what we're going to use uh, to, to make this happen. It's a really cool package and it takes almost no configuration whatsoever. The next piece of the puzzle is to provide an option to yourself or to your client to be able to match this height. And I've used a fairly basic method of doing this, but you'll see that in the advanced tab, I've added a match height group. And you just simply have to add a bit of text, just like you would a CSS class, and add that to each module that you want the height to match. Adding this field alone isn't gonna make the heights match. We then have to add what's called a data attribute to the module uh, via a Beaver Builder filter to read this value and use it to make the jQuery match height plugin do its thing. Okay, so let's jump across to the code editor and see how this is done. Okay, so now we are in the code editor and a couple of things to mention. Although the heights were matching on the screen that you just saw, that was the live version of my site. I've disabled that functionality temporarily. And so on the development version that we're working on, the match height functionality isn't enabled. So we're starting from scratch. Now on the screen, you'll see that I'm in my themes function.php file. In my case, I'm using generate press. And so if you're following along, I'd invite you to do the same. Open up a code editor, jump across to your functions.php and just follow along with what I'm doing. Firstly, I'm just gonna minimize the sidebar as we don't need that, just to give us a bit more space and I'll zoom in so it's a bit clearer for you. Now, I'm just going to make use of this function that already exists in the functions.php file. I didn't create this. This comes with generate press. If you don't have something like this in your own functions.php file, then you can kind of just copy everything apart from that stuff there, and you've got exactly the same as me. Uh, I'm going to leave that there, although I don't need to cater for right to left, and just head below where we can add the jQuery scripts. And we're going to use wp script. And we've got to give it a, a handle or an alias. And for this, I'm just going to call it jQuery match height. And the next parameter that we have to give it is the source. And I'm actually going to use a CDN uh, to add this in rather than downloading the script and including it in my theme. I tend to do this generally anyway. Um, perhaps you prefer to have all of your scripts locally. Maybe it helps with caching or minifying, but with HTTP2, it doesn't matter so much if you've got uh, multiple scripts downloading at any one time. So uh, with that said, I'm just going to paste in the URL to the CDN.js path for, for the match height library. Uh, this has a dependency of jQuery, of course. So we'll just pass that in there as an array. And we don't have a version for it. And we will say, put it in the footer like so. We should now have this uh, match height script loaded into our theme ready to use. So the next thing we need to address is adding the new field to the settings form that I showed you earlier. And to do this, we're going to use the register settings form filter. Now this filter takes two parameters. One is the form and the other is a slug. And that's going to be the name of the form that we want to work with. So inside here, we can make sure that we are only modifying the forms that we need to. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that we return form. 
with the match height stuff, we're going to add that to the advanced tab. And the advanced tab is actually a form in itself with its own name. So what we can do here is specify if module advanced is the name of the slug, then we can do our modifications in here. So let's jump across to the browser and just try to figure out where we need to add this extra field. So again, we're on the live site, so the match height stuff is already working, but let's just ignore that for now. I'm going to open up uh, one of these text editor modules and head to the advanced tab. And each one of these blocks, these gray blocks that we see, is a section within the form. That's spacing, responsive layout, visibility, animation, and HTML element. And you can put it wherever you like. In my case, I've decided to put it in the HTML element section. So let's figure out what this is called by inspecting the element and taking a look. Normally, the section name will reflect the label that's given here. But in this case, it seems that we need the name of CSS underscore selectors. So let's bear that in mind, head back to the code editor and add the new field. So with that in mind, we can start to modify the form, which we know is an array, head into the sections of that array. And as we just saw, use CSS selectors as the array key. From there, we need to go into the fields. And we can now add whatever field we want. In my case, I've called it match height group. And that is an array. So this is just going to be a text field. And we'll give it a label like so. We're returning the form. So that should be enough to allow us to see this extra field in the settings form. So let's head back over to the browser, this time on the development site, and see if we can see this new field. So let's open one of these text editor modules and see what we can see inside. OK, so we haven't got the field. Let's just go and check and see what we're missing. Uh, so we have FL Builder, register settings form, uh, passing in two parameters, we're returning the form, of course. Module advances the name. And we have form, and this should be sections, plural. So let's head back over, give that a refresh. OK, there we go. This would be blank normally. It's only because I had set this up previously that you're seeing how it looks here. But still, even with that value there, you can see that the letters TBC are still out of line with the others in that row. So now we need to add a data attribute to these modules if we have set a value within the match height group field that we've added. Now, very briefly, I'm just going to pop across to the uh, GitHub repo for jQuery match height and scroll down a bit. And you'll see here that if we add the data attribute of data hyphen MH and give it a group name, that is enough for the jQuery library to do its thing and match those heights. So let's go and get that done now. So Beaver Builder provides a pretty handy filter that will allow us to add this data attribute fairly easily. And it's the FL Builder module attributes. This filter also takes two parameters. Uh, the first one this time is the attributes for the module. And the attributes include the data attributes as well as things like CSS classes. The second parameter that this filter gives us access to is the module itself. And this is the module instance. We have access to the settings that are set in the form by the user, which is what we need to see whether the match height group has a value inside it. First thing I'm going to do is return the attributes, just to be safe. And above, I'm going to add a check to make sure that the match height group has a value in it. OK, so that check is now in place. And just to recap on what we've done, we are using the second parameter of the filter to check whether the match height field, match height group field, which we defined above in the register settings form filter, is, is set and not empty. Now, in here, we can simply modify the attributes that we're getting from the filter and add the data MH attribute that we saw that we needed earlier.
So this is going to read the value that is set in the settings form in the CSS selectors uh, section. And it's going to add it as a data attribute to this particular module. So let's go to the front end and see what we've got now. OK, so I've refreshed the page. I'm on the development server still. And you'll see already that the text underneath each of these modules is already aligned. And as I said before, this is working because I'd already added values into the modules before uh, starting this video. Now I'm just going to inspect the element of this module here. And we can see here that the data MH data attribute is added to the module. And it's got the value that we set in the settings form. To the right of that, you'll then see an inline style height that's been applied. And this is the jQuery plugin in action. It is going to look for all of the items that have the same data MH group, find the tallest one in that group, and set the height of all of the modules to be the same as each other. Pretty clever. And with that, we're pretty much done. So give this a go. And if you've got any comments, please leave them below. Cheers. Bye.